I told you to talk to me that way. Oh, 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 wow. Oh my god, she is telling him off. Kind of actually a mess right now. Oh! Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Royal Family. I've been doing a lot of these lately, which I've actually been really loving, albeit the topics of the recent episodes have been very, very sad and traumatic. Um, speaking of traumatic, we are starting today off in the Oasis Springs Palace, where I'm gonna try not to think about it, but where Amira died last time we were here. This palace has housed the deaths of two very important sims, both Philip and Amira, and Charlotte died here, but we don't mind that. So, we're starting off in the Oasis Springs Palace today. We're going to talk about some line of succession stuff that I mentioned two episodes ago, and then we are going to check in on the Wittenberg royal family, see how everyone around that family is handling things currently, and then we are going to be going to Chinxing, or Tomorog, um, to start, and, or slash continues Iori story, because we started it, and then we had a little hiccup here. So, if you're excited for this episode, which you hit that like button all right so back to the oasis springs palace we go i still can't believe that such a traumatic thing happened when it was just supposed to be a little toddler cute meetup for them to have some playtime. but if you recall so a little recap if you recall i did mention that aria had been have oh my gosh what did i forgot we housed a bunch of toddlers but oh my goodness this is a huge mess right now but i mentioned that aria was having some thoughts because currently her son Sahar is not in line for the throne because he is adopted and the whole thing with the royals is that the bloodline like like they're deities almost so the whole point of them is that they're supposed to be descendants and have royal blood so that's why Sahar is not currently heir but Arya has been like you know what that's not fair this is modern day he is my son I am the heir, I'm going to be the future monarch he should be in line for the throne. So we kind of like had her feel things out with Naya last time. Okay, so I downloaded the royalty mod again, but it's not working currently. I put in a little message to the Discord, so I'm hoping that by the time I, I mostly wanted it, actually, well, it would have come in handy for this one too, but I mostly wanted it for the Windenburg fam so we could see, I, I wanted like Alice to start with some of the responsibilities abilities and duties that she has to do, but I also thought it might be useful here. But Nea's not in the best mood, honestly, which, you know, I think Arya, she's waited. It's been a couple weeks after the funeral, so Nea's taking this pretty hard still. It doesn't look like Arya has any more of the moodlets. Gabriel's feeling flirty, but he's also feeling sad. Okay, so he has some of the moodlets. The heart's just chilling. He's just vibing. Also, someone pointed out in the last episode, Ari and Gabriel had like no romantic relationship. It just completely disappeared, even though they went to go make out in the closet. I'm not sure exactly why that was the case, but I do think maybe the relationship, like the romance may have taken a bit of a toll just from all the stress of trying for a baby for so long. So um, I didn't make it like completely back to normal, but I don't think it should be zero. I don't know what happened. I think there's some glitches with the relationships. Um, so Arya, I honestly, you know what? She might not even be the best at reading a room. I think she's better than like Aisha, but I don't think she's, oh, okay, well now you're flirty. Why are you sad, shared sad? Oh, oh, she is. Oh, she is compa- I mean, well, okay, I didn't know she was compassionate, but like, she's- her compassion is showing right now. Nay is feeling really sad. Wait, so is now not the time to do this? I mean, we got it though. This is what we're doing in the episode. Oh god, she's crying. Pump- Flatter her first. You gotta get on her good side for this. Ari and Gabriel are both feeling flirty. <laughs> Express admiration. All right, so we're gonna butter her up a little bit. I don't think this conversation, this topic has ever come up with Naya before. I don't really think Arya knows how Naya feels about it. I think Naya is pretty traditional though. So we'll see. Ooh, worry about baby development. Okay. All right, the flattery is not making Naya any less sad. Ooh, parental pressure from worrying parents. Queen Naya emphasizes, oh dear, 
Queen Aya emphasizes with other Sims parenting woes. It also makes her worry too. Okay, so what if they or what if Arya is sharing her her woes, her stress, her concerns about Sahar, about how he's already starting to deal with some scrutiny. He is a baby. He does not understand it. But like her being worried, and I guess this probably has come up before, but just the scrutiny. Oh, Gabriel and Sahar are jokesters. Okay, I didn't really see it that way, but okay. But just that, like he's having to deal with a lot of scrutiny. Arya has already had to deal with a lot of scrutiny. I mean, this is like the first time in history that a royal has been adopted. I honestly don't see it that much in media. I think the only thing I've seen it in is the new Little Mermaid when Prince Eric was adopted and he was supposed to inherit the throne. And a lot of comments were pointing out just how interesting this is, how this could really change the course of history. But Arya is just thinking, to be fair, I mean, Sahar's still a baby. She's not like asking him about this. She's not asking him about how he feels about this. She, in her head, I feel like is like, this is gonna be the best life for him. This is what's best for him. Of course, this is what he's gonna want. He deserves to be my heir. He is my son. Poor Sahar is just a little baby and has like no contribution to this conversation at all. Naya is worrying too. She's emphasizing with her parental woes, with her stress. So she's being understanding. I wonder if she knows where this is going. We can ask about future plans. So she's like, okay, so, <laughs> so I think I feel like I know what you're getting at. So honey, just out with it already. She's not in the best mood. What if she's being a little like snippy? Like she's sad, but she's still having to, you know, this is a very serious conversation, deep personal conversation. So I'm gonna have her ask about another sim. Ask about Manuel. I think that she knows Manuel, probably expected to not be anywhere close to being in life. I like Duke Manuel, he's pretty cool. Oh, Arya's comforting her. But Manuel, especially being the youngest out of four, probably never thought that he might be as close to becoming a monarch as he is. He honestly might not even, him and Arya are only like three years apart, there's a good chance that he might even die either shortly after or not be capable, like not be functional or die before Arya. So that is a possibility. So Manuel might not even be Monarch. Oh no, she's gonna go cry in the closet. That's not the closet that they made out in, is it? Last time, go sit here. What are you doing? You kiss. Okay, well this, hold on. We're trying to do something here. So he was, anyway, Manuel was probably a shock when he found out that he was going to be as close in line as he is. But now Priya is also close in line. So people pointed out like, how is Priya going to feel about this if Naya says that this is okay? Okay, so they're talking. And I think, you know what's funny though? A lot of people commented this and this is like exactly what I was going to do. So I guess everybody guessed it. <laughs> but people pointed out and I think Naya is going to do this. Oh, the way Naya is talking to her, I feel like is perfect. She's like, I understand what you're, like where you're coming from and why you want this, but you need to understand this is what the monarch is. The monarch needs to come from royal blood. And I feel like Arya would be fighting this. All right, we're gonna say, argue about politics, argue about house rules. I feel like both. Oh, they're being so cute. Argue about politics, sure. Just like Arya fighting back and saying how ridiculous it is. Like Naya, I'm sure, like she's like, you You have to be able to do something. Like this is your grandson. Are you really going to let this happen? You're, you're gonna like let this be his life? Okay, Naya's fighting back too. Naya's like, don't you dare talk to me that way. <laughs> I don't know if they're like full out yelling, but I think they're arguing and getting a little snippy. Arya's just like, you have to to, there has to be a way. You have to know of a way, like there, there, you ha there has to be a way for this to happen. And they is like, okay, listen, this is also like, always the Springs is more of an absolute monarchy. So I do feel like the monarch has more of the power to do this, but it is not going to be a decision that's easy. It's going to be a decision that might get a lot of backlash. I feel like she's like, okay, if Sahar, if you betroth him to someone with Royal Oasis Springs blood, then we might be able to make this work. Then we might get less backlash for this. We might get more people on our side with this. Like that, uh, that is the only thing I can think of for this to happen. Obviously they don't want it to be someone like like close, like we're like not no one like in the immediate family. So now we have to start thinking of people who are from from uh, from the Oasis Springs succession, which is actually a lot of people. <laughs> They're still arguing a little bit. I don't think Arya is like super happy with this solution, but Ney is like, listen, I I can think about it a bit more, but I'm gonna be honest, this is probably the only way. And Arya is like very frustrated about it, but she's I feel like going to give 
give in. She doesn't have that many options here. Poor little Sahar is just like, with Gabriel. Oh my gosh, they're having this serious argument about like the line of succession. And then Sahar and Gabriel are just chilling over here. They're having a little conversation, just some father-son time. So we're gonna figure out and find out in the next episode who they decide is like part of the Oasis Springs Royal Bloodline, but is just far enough so it's not weird for Sahar to possibly be betrothed to, to be a future betrothal. And again, Sahar has no, has having no say in this situation. He's very young. We're gonna see how he, he forms his own opinions and thoughts about this in the future. Because I do want to say, I I and I asked this of you guys too, and um, one, I'm not adopted, so I am going to friends who are adopted, who have more of a right to speak on these situations. But one thing I do want to emphasize throughout this whole like plot, future plot, it's going to go on for a while. Like we'll see it in the future. It's kind of like a, this will happen now and we'll see more later too. Is just, well, I'd love to focus on Sahar's thoughts on this, on his opinions on this, because adoptees don't always get to be asked this kind of stuff and how they feel on this, the, on this, their thoughts and feelings aren't considered a lot of the times. So that's what we want to do with this whole situation. Sahar's still a baby. He's still a kid. When he gets a little bit older, we'll see how he feels about all this. But yeah, so they, they've come to sort of an agreement. They're going to talk about it more. It looks like they're getting along a little bit more. Okay, yeah, they're laughing now. They're they're much, they're doing much better now. Um, and we will see who they pick in the next episode. Okay, we are now back at the Windenburg Palace. We're doing a little check in here. We currently still have the Windenburg fam. They are all still very sad and mourning. Um, we have Caspian. He's hanging out here. He's currently comforting Alice May. Alice May is about to have her first meeting as the queen still not having like done the coronation ceremony yet. That is going to be in a couple episodes, but it is her first meeting with some of the people that she's going to closely work with as the queen. So she's very nervous. Obviously she's still mourning her mother um, and Caspian is here to comfort her. And we're gonna talk about that in a bit too because Caspian might be moving in and staying with the Winterberg royal family. He is currently still doing his classes in Foxbury, but he is trying to get to the point where he'd be able to finish the rest of it online because Jabari has been thinking of asking him if he wants to stay with them for now, for a while, not really like any and time that they know of just because he has been struggling. Jabari has been struggling so, so much and he knows Alice May is too. Um, and he, oh, he's still, I think he's having an emotional meltdown right now. Um, but he is currently, knows that like his daughter needs all the support that she can get. I did have a lot of people say in the comments, a lot of people were wondering if Alice May would be able to finish her college on time. And the thing is she just wouldn't have time. And you all make a really good point. Like she was so excited for this and that might even be like a personal goal for her but it, it's not really that like she can't stay at school it's that she would have just not have the time whatsoever because college is very time consuming it is basically just like a full-time job oh my gosh now alice may is giving herself a pep talk before her meeting i also did just post a speedcast video of her royal makeover as queen giving her some new queenly and regal outfits um so i will link that in the description below if you have not seen that yet okay so we are about to have the meeting here i have nia she's the royal advisor and then she kind of co-works with peter Wintaker, which i'm gonna talk about in a second but he is a bit similar to like the royal advisor but he handles more of like the political side of things and then we have the prime minister jonah Colbright, and then we have zamora who is going to kind of be a stand-in for alice may i think usually it would be jabari who would be here to kind of like either as a guide for support and also just because they are like aware of the role um, so they kind of are acting as like a, a 
homework in a way. And then of course we have Alice May. So Alice May is feeling nervous. She's sitting here and then Zamora is going to sit here. And as soon as she sits down, Peter. Okay, so Peter is, I'm going to link this story pose. I never did anything or talk. I don't think I talked about him in any of the episodes. This was like when I was purely doing story posts just because of my chronic pain. Um, but Peter is, well, to be quite blunt, like a sexist baby boomer. And I just don't know if that was obvious to the people who read the story post. I'm going to link the story post below. Essentially, Amira has had problems with him all the time. He has worked here for so long. He started when Henry was king. So he's been around since Alice Bay, like before she was born. Um, and it's not easy for him to be fired just because he's got like such a long standing relationship. I don't know, if, would it be like tenure essentially? He's just worked there for so long. Um, but Amira has had a lot of problems with him. Nia hates working with him. She was already tense, apparently. Did I make her tense? I don't know if I did, but um, she's already tense because she doesn't know how this is going to go. She's like, oh my gosh, she gave Amira problems all the time. Poor Alice May is like still pretty young. I don't know how this is going to go. He better not give her any issues because one, she's still mourning and this is like her first meeting. This is already difficult for her. And then we've got Jonah here. Jonah is Graham's dad. He's been prime minister for a couple years now, so he might not be it for much longer. I thought it might be fun, like whenever we do get a new prime minister, maybe if you guys want to vote for the new prime minister, so maybe we could set up some sort of election or something like that. I thought that might be fun and a good way to get you guys involved. So yeah, that is who's here. But I feel like Peter, like the first thing he does after he bows to Alice May, of course, is be like, why is Zamora here? Why is Queen Zamora? more right here more is like about to sit down so he's going to make a stink about this already just like oh oh okay okay oh oh my god did he just pull jonah to the side and was like why why is she here why is she and jonah was like i i just she's acting right now for jabari because the prince is you know still mourning and he's like no 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 she's not part of our kingdom she's not supposed to be here like why why is she here so now he's like uh, making a big stink about this so arguments not yell at he would not Dare. Would you dare? Are you about politics? Poor Alice May has like literally no idea what's going on. I feel like also, cause I wanna get Kellen more involved here. Maybe Kellen was supposed to be here, but like couldn't make it this time. Um, but he's like planning up to be there for future events. So her auntie Zamora is stepping in. Zamora is also like a dowager queen. She knows how this stuff works. The family's obviously very much tied to the UKSD royal family because of Jabari. Now they're all arguing. No, 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 whoa. I mean, yes, I think he dislikes malicious interactions. That makes sense. Wait, but why? Why is Nia yelling at Jonah? Maybe because Peter was yelling and she's like, why are you taking, like, are you, are you taking his side? Like, what is going, this is, all okay, this is already, they're all arguing at each other. He's talking about airplanes. He's like, why would she travel all the way here? And she's like, bitch, I am staying here. <laughs> okay, this turned into a huge mess already. Alice May is just standing towards the side right now. Okay, Alice May is telling Peter, oh my God, look at this, they're all arguing. Okay, y'all, we need to keep this maybe like a little bit more civil right now. Maybe a little bit. Okay, he's like explaining to them. He's like, this, all I am saying is the prince needs to be here. Prince Jabari needs to be here. That this is what he's supposed to do. This is his role. He is the one who's part of the Winterberg kingdom. He obviously, oh my God, Alice Bay, Alice Bay. Oh my God. Oh my God. Also, Cedric and Caspian are bonding. Super cute. So I couldn't figure out the royalty mod for now. I'm, I'm working with the creator right now to figure it out to see why it's not working. Um, otherwise, I, I wanted to like assign them all, like assign royal advisor. Oh Oh my gosh, Nia is trying to keep the peace right now. Nia, what are you having against Jonah right now? What did Jonah, whoa! Oh my God, do Nia and Jonah not get along? Okay, listen, Jonah is from, this is like an alternate universe for Jonah because Jonah is the OC of my friend Cass's story. So he is like a huge soft sweetheart to me. So I'm like, what is happening? Why, whoa, 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 why aren't y'all getting along? Jonah, are are you egging on Peter here? You guys have like a little bit more of a friendly relationship. Oh my gosh, Alice May, yes, tell him, tell him. Oh, oh, okay, you stopped. Oh my gosh, Alice May can confront him about bullying. Okay, Alice May is going to confront Peter because she's like, um, sir, with all due respect, my father is currently mourning my mother 
whom you worked with closely. You should understand, you know this. You work with our family almost as closely as Miss Kita works with our family. She's like, my aunt is going to be in this meeting, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I feel like Peter would be the asshole who's like, it is Prince Jabari's duty to be here, no matter what he's going through. Like what kind of prince? Maybe he's not like outright saying this, maybe it's a bit more subtle, but he's like, it is my job to like make sure things are in order here and this is what needs to be done. Alice May is like <laughs> snapping at him. She's so mad at him. Oh my god, she is telling him off. She is like, where are you going? Alice May has literally had it. This is kind of actually a mess right <gasps> Honestly, y'all, she, oh my God, she's feeling confident now. Wow. Oh, he's angry. Okay, that was like literally a mess. That was an absolute mess. Honestly, Alice May is such, she has like such a sensitive heart and she has so, she experiences so many emotions a lot more than I would say a lot of people do. And what we've seen is like a lot of sadness, but what if that sadness is like turning into more anger now? Like we've seen Jabari is shutting down a bit. Cedric seems like he's masking more. Alice May is like acting out as queen. This is her first meeting as queen. She just threw a drink at one of her royal advisors. <laughs> part of me is like, girl, you can't do that. But the other part of me is like, you go girl. Peter sucks. He's honestly like so close to retiring too. I feel like Nia is like pushing him to retire. So Alice May doesn't have to deal with him much longer. Oh my God, that was wild. Maybe, maybe we should move on after that. I don't even know. I don't even know where it could go from there. Peter must be pissed. <laughs> Alice May is like, do not talk about my dad. Don't you dare talk about my dad. Jamari spent her whole life protecting her and now she's protecting her father. Benji's just zooming by. Benji's zooming. Did, did you all see that? Look at him, look at him, look at him zoom. Oh, I think he's dirty. Oh my God, okay, okay. Um. Well, that, that was Alice May's um, first meeting as monarch. <laughs> Oh my god, she really does have a lot of a mirror in her and Jabari to be honest. Okay, what, what let's let's move on. Okay, so we are now at our brand new Chinching Palace. Thank you to Alice who built this because it is freaking beautiful. It's gorgeous. It is so grand and it works for a 40 by 30 lot, which is exactly what we needed. I'm gonna do like a really quick tour so you guys can see and you guys will obviously will see while we are playing in here as well. I'll just do like a little like floor plan view so you guys can see here and you'll see some people walking around. So this is the ground floor. We have an onsen here. This is Leeway's bedroom. So this is the emperor's bedroom. Instead of being like at the top, he's got his own little suite at the bottom, which I think is very cool. This is the kitchen over here. We have a guest bedroom here. And then we have another guest bedroom over here. And then we have the onsen changing rooms. This over here is Yuzuru's bedroom. And this one is Kaito's bedroom. And then we have a little bathroom over here. And then of course these like beautiful grand hallways, with, ooh, whoa, which it does look like we have someone cleaning up Kaito. I don't know who made a mess, someone made a mess, but Kaito is cleaning it up. Very responsible. Um, but I'll show you just like a little bit closer here. Leeway's bedroom, the kitchen, it is beautiful. Full. And then we have the guest bedroom here. This one is Kaito's room, the red one. I, this is actually very fitting, I love it a lot. I feel like Kaito might be a bit sassier. And then this one is Yuzuru's bedroom. I like the blue and the reds for them, I think that's perfect. And then we have the first floor. So we have the throne room right over here, it's so grand. The entrance to the throne room, I'll go into cinematic mode in a sec so you guys can see. We have our ballroom right over here. The banquet hall, it is beautiful. The entrance, this is the foyer entrance here. And then the grand staircase, which I absolutely love. And then hallway, and then the stairs downstairs are back there. This is the view when you first walk in, which I absolutely love. Look at, oh my God, Alice did such a great job. 
This is amazing. So that's the throne room. And then I have to show you all the same for the banquet room here. It is so grand, so beautiful. And then we have in here the, oh, whoops, right in here. This is the ballroom. I love it. Honestly, this makes such good use of the space. Here's the second floor. This is the family dining room. This one is the guest sitting room. This is the monarch's office right here. And then we have Akio and Izumi's bedroom over here. And then this is a guest room. This is the shared bathroom. And then we have, this is the grand staircase, and then the hallway, and the hallway over here. And then this right here is the family game room, which looks like it's being used right now. I'll talk about this in a sec, but we've got the family over. This is Rin and Yuzuru are currently playing in here. And then I have to show you guys the grand staircase. Oh, this is the grand staircase. I absolutely love it. Speaking of, it might be out by the time this video is out, but y'all see the, the medieval pack, the castle palace pack, the estate palace medieval pack? I don't know what it's called, but it looks amazing. I've been getting back into build, or getting back into building. I am starting building. I did one build, um, but I am hoping to do more. So I think that palace is also, or that kit is also going to help influence me to do more as well. Look at these rooms. They're stunning. I also such a good job at filling the space. It is beautiful. And then up here on the third floor, we're about to be here, but this is the training room. So I asked for a martial arts training room. I will say I probably wouldn't be as into this whole martial arts thing if it wasn't for like it being a part of the plot and the story just for like stereotype reasons, but it wasn't part of uh, Arabic and Han's story. So I thought it was fine. I always think a good thing with like, if, if you're falling into stereotypes, this is just like a, my opinion, a little word of advice for storytelling but if you have any characters or anything falling into stereotypes, just having like a lot of characters that are very different. So you have characters that don't fall into stereotypes or characters of like a similar, you know, background, similar race, a similar like, you know, that you just have like multiple of them. So that way, if you do have one falling into stereotype, because it doesn't mean like stereotypes, obviously they are there for a reason and you don't want to like erase a certain thing because martial arts is super, super important to this family and their background. And it is part of the horror story. But, okay, we have the, I was gonna say the siblings, Akio is not currently here, but I'm going to show you guys the martial arts mod. This is in beta. This is by Mercury Foam, who does a lot of amazing dance animations. I am going to have them spar. So, Zayori has been here for like several months. She's gone from a purple belt to a brown belt currently. This also doesn't really work for kids, so that is a downside, because obviously I wanted it to like, you know, help tell the kids' story, but, oh look, oh, oh, okay, so they're sparring. They're, oh, ah, oh my gosh, this is cool. Whoa, whoa, oh my gosh. Oh, 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 wow. <laughs> I did show that part to Jake before. I showed him in like a video and they did the kicking thing. And Jake is like, he's been doing martial arts his whole life. He teaches martial arts. He's like junior world kickboxing champion. He knows some, I go to him for any questions about it, like for story wise, but he saw the kicking thing and he was like, whoa. He's like, that is like the hardest thing to do. He's like, they're amazing. <laughs> so I thought that was really, really funny. It does look like Akio's the one kind of, throwing all the fancy moves at Han though, huh? I just kind of wanted to do this for like the sparring purposes so you guys can see. So then they have the family over. So all the family is visiting, obviously like Han, Araminta, Rin, and Mamie, they wanted to see Zayori. Um, so they're coming to visit too, but they thought they would do. I really just wanted to show this off for the mod. I don't think, I feel like when the kids were growing up, especially with Tai and Akio, cause they were around the same age, they would like spar a lot growing up and Han was always younger, but maybe they got together and Han's like, well, I want to see what Zayori's been learning. So they all kind of just got together. I feel like Tai is like a, a boss though. Like I feel like she could beat Akio. Oh, did he beaten up from fighting? Feeling fearless. Oh, that's from the punching bag. Oh, Akio totally won that one. Okay. Han, I feel like might be, I mean, this was like a friendly spar, but I feel like he'd be kind of embarrassed <laughs> if this was in front of his children. But I really feel like this whole time Zayori has like, oh, okay. She's changing. Oh, um, has really learned a lot. I want to post some pictures of her. Maybe by the time this video is out, I will have already posted them. Um, but like learning how to fight, learning how to sit up for herself. Akio has been like very, I feel like working with her understanding. So when she can't, I wish I could have the kids spar. I feel like that is like, that would be the best, but, um, and that's how I would really want to tell this story. But I feel like 
like anytime she gets discouraged, Aku is like, you know, just focus. I don't know, maybe it's caused some tension between him and his sons, especially Kaito. The fact like maybe he's showing some favoritism towards Ayori. So they've got a little bit of a difficult relationship, Kaito and uh, Akio do. But let's have dinner now. Okay, so the family's all sitting down. I love that. Oh my gosh, I love that. I mean, I, I think Ember Leeway should be at the head of the table, but I kind of love that Akio and Azumi are both like sitting there next to each other. Oh, and Han and Aramid are sitting next to each other too. And Han is sitting next to Tai. I feel like this is very fitting. Wait, this is perfect. They're doing perfect. Now the family's all talking. I wanted them to talk about about some future arranged marriages. I've talked before. I actually, you know what? The kids probably shouldn't be here for this. Maybe y'all should. Maybe y'all should go into the game room. So they're eating dinner. Um, the kids have all finished. This is kind of like that mission of all over again. All right, I'm gonna have them discuss future family plans. Um, Mamie, I'm gonna have you go. Okay, they're talking about future family plans. Um, Shen, I, I really don't think you need to be here for this either. So a while ago, I did like a monarch's pose and Avira was in it with Alice May, but they were talking about their thoughts on arranged marriages and Han and Araminta are still kind Kind of up in the air about it because like they were originally kind of against it but then theirs went pretty well so they wonder if they should do the same thing for Zayori especially because they were such a good match and they want what's best for their kids they want them to especially for Zayori being the future empress they want her to have someone who's going to be very supportive and and who knows the like the world well who's going to have an idea of already what's going on and the responsibilities and all that stuff so They've considered putting their child in arranged marriage. Pretty much for Chin Ching, they're always in arranged marriages. That is like their family's ideals. All of these were arranged marriages. All we, we know Han and Araminta were arranged marriage. Akio and Azumi, they were arranged marriage. And then Tai and Zhang were arranged marriage too. And theirs all went pretty well. Akio's and Azumi's, their marriage was rough at first. It was like pretty rough. And I think they still have their issues, but they've learned to like become a team. So another rule in case you guys didn't know for Chin Ching is that they have to marry, the heir has to marry someone from Chinching, so they can never marry outside. So currently they are working on a future betrothal for Kaito. Um, it is the Duchess and Duke Consort of Chinching's daughter. Well, they keep leaving. <laughs> I need them to stop. So I feel like Akio would be like bringing this up like, oh yeah, we're doing this um, with Kaito and and the Duchess and Duke's daughter. Pretty much like a set in stone plan right now. Like what are, are, are you guys are doing an arranged marriage for Sayori, right? And I feel like Han and Araminta are like, we haven't really decided yet. Um, and Aki was like, well, they, you know, they have um, like the Duke and Duchess, they also have a son. <laughs> um, so they have a, they have an older boy and then a, a girl who's about a year younger than their son is. Did Araminta just disappear? Why do they keep disappearing? That is so weird. I need y'all to stop getting up and switching spots. You guys are playing musical chairs. I guess that's like a Sims thing all the time, isn't it? So just, we're gonna keep, yeah, discuss a board's family, discuss future family plans, all that stuff. Um, so Han and Aramint are basically admitting to like they've thought about it before. I feel like Ty might be encouraging it a little bit just because she knows like Han and Araminta's theirs went so well. Like, you know, it wouldn't hurt. You could just meet, like have I already meet someone meet the family like just so you guys are prepared because even though she's still pretty young I know this is again kind of the same thing with Sahar it's kind of weird because they're so young but this is like a fake situation and this is purely for plot and story so just go with it but they're like well yeah like I think you guys should just you know introduce her to someone and they're kind of thinking like what are their options it's like well there's a couple options there's like the Duke's kids of Sulani Zayori and them they're already kind of friends with them and I feel like Akio is Okay, so <laughs> jokester Shen and Zayori, yes, I love that. Okay, I, I can imagine Akio being like, because they said that the Duchess of Chinching and the Duke, they have a son. But then he's like, oh yeah, you know what, you're right. You That would be the smart thing to do. Like y'all should probably, it would be stronger for your kingdom for her to be betrothed to someone from another kingdom, not from 
chin chin because we, we already have these connections and that sort of thing. And I feel like Han is like, like maybe Akio says it a little bit belittlingly. Is that a word? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have him do that and be like, let's see, argument. It would be arguments, or could we do? Let's do a petty jab because he's like, oh yeah. I mean, like obviously you guys should have her be in arranged marriage with someone from a different kingdom. Like, oh, why? Like, why wouldn't you think of that? <laughs> And Han, out of spite, is like, oh my gosh, oh, they got up for this. This is like a repeat of what just happened with Elsmay and Peter all over again. <laughs> but I feel like Han is gonna do a petty jab back. He's like, well, I think we know what's best for our daughter. We'll have her meet the son of the Duke of Chin Ching, or the Duchess of Chin Ching. Um, now they're arguing <laughs> and they're having an offensive conversation. I just feel like anytime they're in a room, it's a lot of petty jabs and like Han is a sweetheart and we love him but I feel like he I mean understandably so has a lot of bitter feelings with the way that Akio treated him growing up um so he tends to snap back and um argue with him a good amount so he's like well no then we'll we'll have Sayori like we'll have her meet the kids of the Duchess and Duke of Chin Ching oh he's why are you feeling so flirty right now he's also probably bitter because he got beaten up in the spa Poor Han. Also, Sulani doesn't do arranged marriages necessarily. Like, they're thinking about it for their kids. Kimmy and Makana are because she's from Oasis Springs and they tend to do arranged marriages and it, it goes fairly well, um, usually. So, but with Kona, his sons, like all of his kids, Nani and Tali included, they, I feel like he's from the generation that doesn't, in Sulani, that doesn't do the arranged marriages and isn't really for the arranged marriages. So they're like, we don't know if that's going to be an option. So out of spite too, he's like, well, we'll have Zayori meet the son of the Duchess and Duke of Chin Ching. <laughs> so we're gonna have them do that in the next episode. Poor Zayori has no idea what's going on. I feel like she'd be like kind of, oh, okay with this like she knows it, it it's probably just going to be a meeting and Han and Araminta would never like force her to do anything if things don't get along if she doesn't want to do it they probably wouldn't make her but they want her to at least meet him so you guys will see that in a machinima in the next episode but I think we're gonna end this video here okay so we had a lot happen we talked a lot about arranging marriages and possible changes in succession. We also saw kind of how Alice May is handling things. And I'd love to hear your guys' theories in the comments because it's interesting. Alice May has become the opposite of Amira in a sense because when Amira, when May had died, Amira was like so outgoing, kind of hot-headed. She would like act out. And then when May had passed away, she shut down. She was like way more timid. And Alice May before was a lot more timid. And like she's grown a lot from where she was before, but she was like a lot more timid. And now she's still like her depression's back, but she's handling it in a different way. And the feelings are kind of like she's getting more irritated, more protective, more angry. It, it's just not what I was quite expecting, but I kind of want to go with it. And then the next video is going to be the Royal Regency mini series. I'm excited for that. And then Academic Adventures will be coming soon. Um, but that is everything for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!